example. If you are seeing some delays, refer to your Arkansas Child Development and Early Learning Standards. Really look at them and see, is this child truly performing below age level or are they considered to be within range? Because there is a range, that range of development that we have to consider. But if you're looking at a child who is birth to three, those children are served through First Connections, which is Part C of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And I wanted to show you their website because it's very user-friendly and their referral process is all done online. So if you have an infant or a toddler and you've looked at those developmental uh, progressions and you think you might have a child that's in need of services, that can be done through the First Connections website. And at the top, refer a child. If you click, it will go straight to the process. You start here, it's an online referral. What happens after that fact is that they set up a conference with the parents, they talk to them about what services are offered and get consent to see if they want the child to move forward with the process. If they qualify, services can be provided anywhere that child is located. So it's not, you're not going to lose a child from your program. Those providers can come in and see those children there, offer you suggestions on things you can do with that child and work with them to get them to age level. Three to five is here housed at DESE currently. We're kind of in the process of transition um, with the birth to three. But with three to five, those referrals are made directly to those school districts or co-ops that serve on behalf of those school districts. So we do have a list with contact information for each of the programs that serve children in our state. And you'll notice there's a combination. Some school districts like Conway, Camden, Fairview provide their own services, while some districts like for example, Cabot, they contract with a co-op to provide. So I'm going to put into the chat a copy of this list for you to refer to, but don't worry about getting bogged down in it. If you have a child who you feel like needs some a screening or needs some services, you can call our office at any time and we will get you in contact with the right person. So let me put a couple of things in. Um, the first thing I want to connect you with is this Child Find poster. So this is a printable PDF that gives the numbers and contact information for both the zero to three and the three to five program. You can copy this, you can print it, you can hang it up in your program. You can send it home with parents if you feel like you know that might be beneficial but I wanted you to have access to that. Um, I'm also going to put in the First Connections website. So if you're interested in making a referral. I yes. Oh, Lori, you're muted. Danita, I'm sorry. I did drop the First Connections website and the DESE Early Childhood Special Ed website in the chat for you. Okay, and I'm going to put a direct link to this list in case they have a child. But what we want you to know is that these services are free. Um, there's no cost. There's no requirements for parents. If a child is found eligible through that evaluation process, then those services are provided at no expense to the parents or to you. So if you have children who you feel like are in need, you can contact the numbers I have given you or you can call my office and our staff will get you in contact and I will put that in the chat also. Any questions before I turn it back over? Wonderful, Tom, I'm turning it back over to you. Thank you, Miss uh, Danita. Um, our, our next guest is Ms. An Angie Neal. She is the director of Good Earth Learning Center. I've had the opportunity myself to go out and see her center. 
Um, I want to thank her for her hospitality to me while I was there viewing the, the children, and it was a delightful time there. So we are going to turn it over to Ms. Angie Neal to tell us what's going on at Good Earth Learning Center. Okay, hi. First, I want to say thanks to the division for letting me come on and share my heart a little bit, and um, and that's just what I'm going to do. Pictures actually um, tell the story, so I'm just going to bring those up and get started. Oh, there. You should be able to see a little guy at a, at a garden. So we are a nature school. We're a forest school and a garden school. Can everybody hear me okay, Tom? Yes, we hear you just fine. Okay, good. So we're a, a forest school and a nature school in March. We'll have our 10th birthday. And we do a lot of gardening. We garden in the dirt and we garden aeroponically. And um, I want to start out by saying just a couple of things and then I'll dive into these pictures. But we have a few curriculums we use at Good Earth Learning Center. I have been dealing with adults uh, in a in adult the adult world for a long time, I started out in Head Start in a classroom and as a mental health specialist, and then transitioned back. And as I began to get about a hundred hours of training before I opened the school, I met a lot of really cool folk. And one of the first people I met was Clarissa Wallace, and she told me about conscious discipline. It's our core curriculum at this school, and my philosophy raising my own boys. I stayed home eighteen years with them was if they don't learn their colors or shapes or the Pledge of Allegiance uh, or their alphabet by 12th grade, they can send them back through, I'm sure. But what I wanted them to learn was to love each other and to take care of other folk. And that has been our philosophy at this school. So conscious discipline comes first with us because if, if our staff uh, can regulate their emotions to get the best out of these kiddos, then we've won the ball game. Then comes the other learning. We use a curriculum uh, called Growing Up Wild. It's free from the Arkansas Game and Com uh, Fish Commission. It has the NACI standards and the Head Start domains in it. So everything in there is laid out. The lesson plans are laid out. It's free. Contact the Game and Fish Commission about that. And it teaches math, music, reading. Uh, and these are basic skills starting with three to five-year-olds, okay? So it's really cool. And we just like make it just a little less complex for our babies and use the same thing. But if we never make it to touch a leaf and we're going to because we're outside or to talk about anything else. And sometimes it happens if we're busy regulating emotions, but they learn so quickly. And these kiddos have had it so much that they actually help regulate each other. So I love that. Um, so the gardening comes next. This little guy here's uh, harvesting kale because we make a lot of smoothies here. They grow the food that goes in them. We learned that children who grow food are more likely to try it and like it. So I'm big on teaching kids to eat healthy. This little guy here, we were doing some kind of project, but he decided to sit down by the towers and play music and we let him serenade us. Uh, and then there's some of the berries that we use in our smoothies. This little gal here, this tower was actually planted. Tom saw it yesterday, but it was planted about three weeks ago from some small plants and it just grows really quick and well. There's a curriculum with it too. It comes free with the tower gardens. If anyone's interested in those, you can connect with me. This, this is a two-year-old planting some lavender. And then this little gal, I think she turned three and she's planting spinach. And it doesn't look like ordinary spinach. It has a red stem, but... I try to buy wonky stuff so the kids can uh, experiment with different foods. You would never know it was the second day on the job for this little boy. And let me tell you something. He had gotten kicked out of a daycare for behavior. I got two the same week. It was last week. And this was the second day on the job. And he found a granddaddy and wanted to show it to us. But it, Tom couldn't tell who was new here when he was here yesterday. These kids fit fine if you're outside and they have plenty of space and you're talking to them with love and respect. I have never in the history of the school kicked a kid out. We don't do that. These kiddos, this was this morning, they were building with the builder board, so I added it to my slide. They have plenty of physical movement. I don't have to worry about writing a lot into our lesson plans 
because since we learn outside, they are getting that movement, building these forts and taking them down. I think I actually bought these with some grant money um, with one of the programs, Knapsack, I think, because it was a physical activity. We didn't buy the builder boards with that. We bought the materials. It was about $500 worth of marine plywood that we made them. Uh, this is just a normal day art out in the woods. Uh, these kids are two and three year olds. Same thing here. You can see they've made something, but they're all busy and they're all happy. One of those kids is my granddaughter. And then this is what I'm going for. I don't want these kids sitting inside. The teachers don't want to be either. So this is what I'm going for every day. We have some water barrels. We decide to put them at the edge where the rain comes off because they like a lot of water and they can regulate this themselves. This is an old boat someone donated years ago. They read in it, they picnic in it, they sail the seas in it. And then they were just out moving some dirt. We, this was during the summer, so we had a little bit older kiddos, and this one was teaching us how to build a fire, and I was had some pretty mixed emotions about it, but we had some safety around it, too. I think these kiddos need some skills. Here we are back, making faces with some things we find in the woods. These little guys are so interested in the, uh, the moss and the fungus that's growing on these trees, so we explore and see all different kinds of it. But you don't see a lot of upset in these pictures. We don't have a lot of it, but we do have it. And when we do, we just take a deep breath and relax and decide what we want out of this situation as a teacher. This is a two-year-old class, and I don't know what they found, but they're all very interested in it. We have a lot of ice cream making goes on around here, so... If they're very young, we post a picture of the ingredients and let them make it. If they're a little bit older, we write the words beside the picture so they can get that as well. So if they're three and up, they're exposed to the word in the picture. And then they do the work. They've done it so much that they barely need my help. This is a just a dirt mound out front that I had hauled in. And what you're seeing is these kiddos hauling water up and all working together to create a stream. So there's so many things they think they're playing, but they are learning engineering, they are learning cooperation, cause and effect, so much is going on while they soak up some vitamin D. The baby class walked over for a visit, so they got a little face. I think they were giving out mustaches that day, if I'm correct, that was about a week ago. We gather around a fire pit, when it gets cold enough, we'll be lighting that. There's some safety involved. Um, you're actually seeing an elementary group here. We did start an elementary school this year. And here's our littles eating and sleeping outside. We do that a lot if the weather permits. It's, if it's comfortable enough to rest, we're out there. Well, I'm going for relationships. So I've got some kids that are 14 and 15 that have come through me now, and they're still connected with the family they made here at the school. I see birthday parties going on, and it's our school family connecting up, and we're still invited and show up to them, of course. We're all about relationships and connection, and of course, a little dirt. These guys are from New Zealand. Their military pays their rate to be here. We have kind of a melting pot going on here, as you can see. They're just out collecting flowers. So the, I, the dandelions were popping up before it got actually very warm. So you can see they're still dressed for the winter, but they have their wares. We have a nice teepee now that the kiddos can use for imaginative play, for gathering. And there it is in its glory. It's about 22 feet across. Really nice to add to the playscape. A tree fell. This is out on our nature walk, so it's not really in the licensed area, but we decided to skin the branches off of it and let them have it. This creek, you might be interested to know about it. I'm very connected with the Game and Fish. 
and about eight years ago, they gave me a grant for a wildlife habitat. So we chose to build this so the birds could come in and the butterflies could come in and get a drink. And so we have binoculars and bird books from the Game and Fish. And even our youngest children, if they can pick them up and look at them, they just clutched them to carry them around. And then I had the good sense to add a mug kitchen to it so I could observe children having a great time too. Here we are out in nature again, learning. What about the babies you say? Well, they love to hear the birds sing. They love to see the leaves blow and feel the water on their face. This little girl's 14 months. This was a week or two ago that I took this shot. And there's our school family. You can't see, you couldn't even tell me who's neurodiverse in this picture, but I collect them. I get a lot of kids that are kicked out of other settings. I've had them drive from Benton. I'm north of Cabot. They want their kids loved and connected. And I certainly have a population from Little Rock. We're building. And uh, I took Tom out to see this side as well. I turn away five to seven kids a day. Um, if I have an emergency, it usually happens about the time someone in the military leaves and I'll plop them in there so the waiting list continues. My emergency is my child is being kicked out because of their behavior and I'm like, just bring them here. Nobody's gonna kick them out. This is gonna be down Highway 5 past Greystone. It's gonna have infants, toddlers, pre-K. It's about half full, it's supposed to open at the holidays and then we'll start another one on the same side. There's about 20 acres of forest out there. So I'm gonna stop this, or I'm ready to stop the share if somebody wants to do that or I will. I'm open for questions, I'm open for connection. If you need my information, you can get it from anyone uh, that knows me at the division. Uh, Deborah Mantioni was my licensing agent when I came on board and uh, I fell in love with her and she had to learn to adjust to me because I'm different but we learned a safe way and now I have Amanda Whitney who's fallen right in and we embrace her and love having them come out um, to see our wild ways. Any questions for Angie? Angie, do you wanna put your um, phone number in the chat? So if they have any questions in particular, they can call you directly. Absolutely. And we are also very proud to have Miss uh, Jody Abernathy. Um, Jody, we're going to turn this over to you, Director of Dream and Early Childhood After School Academy. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? We hear you great, Jody. Okay, I'm operating in a new place on new equipment, so I got a little scared this morning that this wasn't going to work. So, I am Jody Abernathy. I'm the Director of Dream. Uh, we currently have four child care centers in Sherwood. We um, we are trying our best to help our city. We have 90 new houses going in. We have no daycare vacancies in the city of Sherwood. We can't even take siblings of the children that we currently have enrolled. And so we saw that there was an issue and we wanted to make sure that we accommodated our community. And so we have just acquired a 20,000 square foot building um, it was the old uh, ABC Financial Call Center. And so we have transformed. I'm going to try to see if I can share this video. Can you all see that video? Let's see, hang on just a second. Not yet. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me see. Maybe now we can do that. Okay, are y'all able to see that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of talk through the video. Um, but this is our new center. And we have, we've, we started in phases because I am on the Sherwood Planning Commission. And I know all too well that fire codes are very crazy when you get ready to open up a place that provides care for children. And um, we have moved over. We have two specialty programs. We have an ABC program here and also a STEAM program. Um, this is one of this is our ABC classroom, and 
um, our STEM program we opened because we had a lot of parents that didn't qualify for ABC and they had uh, three and four year old children. And those children, a lot of times, even in the school district, if you don't financially qualify, it kind of leaves your child going to, you know, a private school, a private center, uh, and they may not be getting the quality of care that the ABC children are getting, and then they're going into kindergarten. And so we created a, a STEAM classroom as well. And so this is our STEAM classroom here. Um, and it's for children that don't financially qualify, but they get um, all of the activities and opportunities that STEAM offers. And they've they've added an arts component to STEM. And so that's where uh, STEAM comes from. This is our after school program. Our after school kids were elated to be able to come uh, to this center. We have for 16 years always um, have been in one room. So we've partnered with schools. We've been in the cafeteria or we've had uh, never really had our own space. And so we have three huge spaces now for our after school kids. One includes a movie theater. Um, so the kids are able to come and watch movies and not just movies. We record ourselves and we we have a, a minute of the day, like character minute. And so they come in and they watch videos there. We also have a library and this is our library. Um, and so it's very rich with different pictures of different um, people that have spearheaded in history. And so they're able to go and see. And then there are also several different centers that are set up so that the children are able to have an amazing experience in those in those centers. They also have their own private cubbies. And so they have never had like just just it was like a zoo here the first day. They were like, what in the world? You know, what is this? And they thought they were in Disney World. And so we had to get some order, but we've gotten it down. We we opened September the 18th and all of our children are so excited. Our parents are excited. Um, and as we um continue with this process, we'll be moving toward closing two of our facilities that are rental spaces and very small spaces and then consolidating to two big spaces so that we will have an infant toddler center and then we will also have a center that caters to uh, pre-K to after school age children. So by the time we're finished and we're hoping by Thanksgiving, we'll be able to take about 150 more children that live in our community, which will help the deficit that we currently have. Um, I do want to say this, when I entered into this project, it was it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, I called DHS and I was like, you know, I don't know what they're going to say. And, but I, um, I, I, I look for big things to do and I really want to make an impact in my community. And so um, I started out with a couple of ladies and they just, they came in and they were like, whoa, this is a big place, but it wasn't too big for them to come and help. And so um, I really wanna thank Kendra Harper and Sharon Devon for getting on board um, and Don Jeffrey as well. They really saw the potential of what we could do. And um, our community is behind us to really just try to push and make sure that we're providing a space for our children that they're safe and not just safe, but they're learning and they have an opportunity to really grow. Um, in a place like our, this is nothing like our city has nothing like this. And so this is this is something that is wonderful for all of our families. And we're just hoping that we're able to make uh, additional accommodations and, you know, and the accommodations that we're not able to make, we're going to refer out to make sure that all of our daycare centers in our city are full. I think this is played twice. So I just wanted you guys to just really be able to see all of the things that the kids are exposed to here. Let me see if I can stop it there. And that's pretty much, that's that's our new center. We're growing and hopefully I can um, come back and share the second phase. We've got 10,000 more uh, square feet of space that we're, that we're remodeling currently. Uh, so we'll, we should be finished with that piece. We're hoping by Thanksgiving. Um, so maybe we'll be able to show the second phase of what we're doing um, at another time. Thank you, Jody. I tell you what, it's amazing what our providers are doing out in, in the field uh, and taking care of our children. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize it, but Arkansas was ranked number one again in the nation this last year on uh, our early childhood um, programs. 
Um, and I am just very proud uh, to be a part of this of this program and very proud of all the things that our providers are doing. You guys are doing a great job out there. And I know you do it because your heart, the heart you have for our children. And uh, I don't know, it just gives, makes me feel nice and warm inside thinking about all of that. So let me cover uh, a couple of things. Um, I, I did get an email and asking if our child care voucher fund was uh, depleted due to um, the government shut down. And no, that that is that is not true. It won't affect our child care our regular child care vouchers at all. Our essential worker funds, however, we have said from the beginning were time limited, and they have been exhausted. I do want to explain to you that. Um, Someplace and uh, either close to the end of this year, all authorizations will end. I know there are some out there right now that have been um, keyed out through the through to April, but even those are going to have to be ending someplace around the end of this year. So we're going to be making a real effort to let everyone know that those funds have been uh, uh, exhausted and. Uh, those vouchers, those essential worker fund vouchers will be ending for uh, the entire state or uh, someplace close to the end of this year. We're still working on some of the final reports so we can have an exact date on that. But uh, just a forewarning that all essential worker fund vouchers will be exhausted. Uh, the other thing is uh, you should, many of you should have received some funds already uh, this last week from our final round of COVID grants that have been issued. Um, we have exhausted all of the funds for uh, COVID and our ARPA funds have all been uh, uh, exhausted out and, and expended out. I just want to remind you that the state received $258 million that went directly to uh, providers across the state during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic that we had. Uh, and then also on top of that, there were CURSA funds and CARES funds that went directly to providers. And then we had um, our supply building grants and our TEACH grants and all $494 million in the last uh, year and a half went out or is in the present, presently going out to our providers across the, across the state. Um, when I look at what other states have done with their um, COVID funds and their ARPA funds, I will tell you, I am very pleased and very proud of how our providers out in the field have spent their money wisely on making uh, children the priority and serving children and, of course, serving uh, the workers that are there. So thank you. Thank you very much for all of that. If you have any questions about any of those, of course, you can contact myself or Paige Cox. Um, about those funds. If you have any questions about the essential worker funds that, and them being exhausted, you can contact Brandy Ishman on, on my staff as well. And we'll be happy uh, to discuss those things with you. Um, if you have any questions, you can put those in the chat as well and we'll be answering that. I want to finally end up with Miss Kayla Bodie, who I think has some exciting news about background check. Katie, Kayla does an excellent job. And we're very honored to have her working with uh, the division as well. Kayla? Thank you, Tom. So I'm um, really excited to be here this afternoon. So we have new changes, new exciting changes for background checks. Um, effective, this was October 1st, we deployed a, a new addition to the ELS portal. So this process is only going to affect those of you who are licensed through um, our Office of Early Childhood, and you're also required to have background checks as part of employment as, say, a public school, charter school, or maybe you are an education co-op. Um, so those of you who are currently submitting two background checks, you are no longer going to have to do that. You are only going to submit one background check. Um, so we have a, a screenshot there on the page. Now, when you go into the ALS program to submit just like you would for your teacher, your classified, non-classified staff, maybe they work in your ABC program or maybe they work in your after-school program that's also licensed through the Office of Early Childhood, 
you will see a new option for the, um, it's got the abbreviations for AR, ADE, and then it says Office of Early Childhood. And you will see the requester says CHI for child care. So just similar to like you're doing in your INA account, but this submission is gonna come to our office. We are going to process those. And then the result will be posted into the ALS program. So you will be able to log in to um, ALS or the public facing side to see the approval um, and the date. And so we're really excited about this. There should be instructions that are going out to all of the districts and all of the co-op, um, ABC programs, anyone who is licensed through the Office of Early Childhood. And if you have not gotten those instructions, please feel free to send me an email. I will send them directly to you. I'm going to put my contact information into the chat box so you can reach out to me. Um, we're really excited about this. I know this doesn't affect our privately owned uh, facilities or our home child care facilities at this time. But for those of you that have been having to submit two background checks and get two sets of fingerprints and two child maltreatments, this is going to be a big relief. Um, it's also really cost effective because now you're only going to be paying the $17.25 for one check instead of, you know, paying for two. So I will put my information there. If you have any questions, feel free to call me or email me. We can walk through this new process and I hope you have a great afternoon. All right. Thanks, Tom. And of course, our next slide is Ms. Tanya Williams, who is not here, but we're very proud of, of all the work that she's done. Our next call is November the 7th at uh, 12 p.m. So I'm so happy that all of you have joined us. Uh, once again, contact us for any information that you need. Um, Keeler, anything else that I've missed or Ashlyn, anything that I've missed? Nope. Are there any questions in the chat that we might need to? I think we're not? looking good in the chat, except for if somebody on the team has uh, information uh, regarding Arkansas being given the honor of being ranked number one in the country again for early learning. That would be fantastic if you could drop that down in the chat box for everyone. Other than that, I think we're good, Tom. Yes, Actually, and I did. Lori's already done that. She has already dropped in the website for Arkansas being number one. Thank you, okay. Lori Bridges, for doing that. You're welcome. That is um, That study was done by Wallet Hub. And if you go to that link, um, it will take you to that. And you can click on Arkansas in the main findings section. And it will list. Um, and it, it was really looking at systems, the systems that we have in place in Arkansas around early childhood education. Um, but that link is there. You can click on it and it will take you right to it. And that's exciting news for Arkansas. That Once is. again, thank you everybody for joining the call and thank you for all you do for our children of Arkansas. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.